Hello hackers! Welcome to another Pwn College video. Today we'll be talking about reverse engineering, specifically what reverse engineering is. Let's get started. Let me move my video over here. I think this is a safe spot for it for the rest of the lecture. Um, what is reverse engineering? Well, to understand reverse engineering, First, let's understand engineering, specifically kind of normal engineering and software development, which I'll talk about in terms of forward engineering here, right? The engineering process um, in this context is the creation of a program, right? And, and the creation of a program is pretty straightforward. You figure out what you want to write, you write it, you compile it, and that might be uh, an implicit step as your code is executed by a just-in-time compilation engine, um, and, or, or, or things like that. Um, and then you run it. And uh, that's kind of the engineering you know, process. I guess running it isn't technically part of the process, but uh, the point is um, the process is kind of um, approximated on the right here, uh, there, um, uh, with a bunch of steps, right? You, you start with the design, you code, you compile, and then there's some, uh, you know, uh, frustration there, and then eventually things work. All right. Um, the thing to understand about reverse engineering is that at every point in this process, information is lost, right? And reverse engineering is the uh, concept of getting that information back, which is very non-trivial. So let's uh, roll through you know, what kind of information might be lost at every step, right? First, uh, between design and uh, the creation of code, a lot of information is lost. This has to do with intent, right? What was this program supposed to do? Um, oftentimes you look at some code, even you have yourself has written a semester or a year or a decade ago, and you think, what was I thinking? Or sometimes as a bonus, you think, who the heck wrote this code, right? And uh, turns out it was you, right? Um, and then things get worse. When you uh, get to that kind of compiling and assembling st step, you take your code, you pass it through your compiler, and your compiler immediately strips out all of the comments, right? Those comments are useful. Those comments are useful to understand the uh, your intent when writing the code and, and the functionality of the code, but they're gone now, right? Just from the compilation step. Um, you lose variable names, uh, and, and we'll, I'll, I'll show a demo. Where you, variables just become memory locations, right? And then uh, a lot of semantic knowledge is lost. Um, you often lose function names. Uh, you lose all type information. Um, and sometimes the compiler might optimize out an entire algorithm, right? So you had some uh, very well uh, specified mathematical operation and the compiler says, oh, no problem. I know a faster way to do this. Replace it with a faster way. If you're reverse engineering that code, it might no longer make sense, right? So reverse engineering is kind of the question of, you know, how do we get all of this information back from the final product, from the executable, the binary code? Until now in this course, we've been dealing with source code. This module really represents our jump into uh, binary code, um, or rather we've been dealing with source code in the practice problems, right? Uh, you always have gotten source code. Now, from this point on, we will no longer get that source code. All right. So um, let's look at some uh, forward engineering tools to kind of contextualize the reverse engineering process. Um, we're going to look at an ID. I use Vim. Um, some people use a real ID, but uh, we will not be doing that here. Um, and then we'll look at the compilation process, what it kind of leaves behind, uh, what, what information is still there and then uh, what happens when we strip that information away. All right, let's check this out. So I have my, um, uh, it picked up the wrong terminal. Hold on a second, let me fix this. All right, we're back. 
We uh, had to fight with OBS a little bit to uh, get the right window to display, but it's here now. Uh, okay, so we're uh, on the terminal. Um, of course, I wrote a hello world program. This is a simple program, two functions um, and a variable name, right? So it has this variable name of my name. It reads in up to a thousand um, character along string into that. And then it calls say hello with the name and it just says hello, right? So if you compile it and run it, there it is. Very cool hello world program. All right, so let's see what information is here, right? There, there's a couple of things. One is this variable, my name. Another one is the length of this very uh, the length of the array um, and it's a character array the fact that it's an array of characters um, another piece of information is that this function takes this uh, array of characters as input and another one is um, that this function is named say hello okay and I'm gonna go through and show you what is lost at every step um, so let's start with uh, compilation. Actually, rather than compilation, let's start. Let me add a comment here. Let's start with see with the preprocessing. This is a variable to hold my name. Okay, so here's a comment. The first thing that happens in the compilation process, and I don't remember the uh, GCC flags to uh, invoke this directly, is the C preprocessor runs. The C preprocessor handles all the include statements um, and uh, uh, expands macros and so forth, and it removes comments. So this is the code that actually gets compiled. If I properly had included everything I should have included, scdio.h, so now that if when I compile it, we don't get any warnings, the C preprocessor will actually include scdio.h. This is all of the stuff. This is all the stuff that is in scdio.h. Let me find this through less. So here's all of the stuff that's included and my actual code is right at the bottom there and the C preprocessor removed my comment. There you have it. All right, so then, so this gets into hello preprocessed.c. And then there is a um, assembling step, right? So our, our, our C code, or sorry, a compilation step. Our C code is compiled into assembly code. Um, and I recently found out that uh, I can have GCC actually generate Intel syntax assembly, which is gonna be much better. So we take the preprocessed hello, and then we assemble it. And now we have hello preprocessed dot, or sorry, we compile it into assembly code. And this is the end result. So what happened here? Um, this is now our, uh, the assembly code that will be assembled to generate the C code. And what did we lose in this step? Well, one thing we lost is, um, let's go to main. Here in main, there used to be a character array. Let me show you the original source. There was a character array with my name, right? Now, the variable name, my name is gone. It is now just a memory reference right here, somewhere on, on the stack. We'll talk about what the stack is later and so forth. But the, the name of it is gone. We've already, we lost variable names here, um, already at least local variables uh, to functions. We also lost all the type information. The fact that it was um, uh, 1024 in, in size, you see this 1040, uh, something got padded or, or, or is compensating for other things in the function frame. We'll talk about what a function frame is later in the module as well. Um, we've lost the fact that it's uh, a character array and so on, right? So we've already lost quite a lot of information, but at least the uh, say hello um, string is still there. Well, if we finish compiling it, um, uh, we can see here, if we disassemble the result, 
the say hello string is still there, but this is not how um, software is typically, uh, let's decompile it just for appropriateness sake. It's right there. This is not typically how um, software is shipped. Typically software is also stripped of any unnecessary metadata to reduce the size. If you look at the size of hello, and then you'll strip hello, look at the size of it again, smaller, nicer, less open to reverse engineering. Now, if you memory dump it, the whole text segment has no information for G, uh, for object dump to figure out even where functions are. And if we look at strings, which is the other thing, let's recompile this. We look at strings in the original compilation and look for our say name function. Uh, sorry, say hello function. It's right here. Okay. If we strip it, it's gone. All right. So we lose more and more um, data as we go further and further into the uh, forward engineering process. Now, one thing you can ship binaries with all of this data, most of this data still in them. We can compile from the original binary with a dash G flag, which will include all of the um, information on uh, types, on everything, on variable names, on variable sizes. If I now do strings hello, grab my name, even the variable still shows up, the variable name. But typically, most of this information is lost. The, the, the definition that this is even a function has to be recovered uh, using reverse engineering tools and, and, and all of the other lost information as well. All right, so um, what is the reverse engineering process? Well, the reverse engineering process is basically going backwards starting from the executable instead of starting from the source code or starting from the design even the better. You start from the executable, you disassemble it, you decompile it, whether manually or automatically, you do a lot of thinking to infer using your intuition, the original intent behind the code. It is not easy um, and it is uh, an art, right? It's uh, an art of putting yourself in the mo mind and the shoes of the developer and trying to understand. Um, typically in this process, you use several tools to extract knowledge and then you put this knowledge together in your brain and build up an understanding of the program. And throughout this module, we'll learn how to do that and then we'll practice it. Stay tuned.